in life, there's no rights or wrongs, but I don't really like the word elevated. And when you attach it to Vietnamese, because when you say elevated, it just, my, my thought is when you say you want to elevate the cuisine or elevate Vietnamese food, that means you're saying the original food, Vietnamese food is bad. Oh man, I knew I hit a pressure point on that <laughs> one. I want to see if you can name the top 10 countries that eat the most instant noodles in the world top 10 countries that eat the most instant noodles Imagine. now this is coming from the world instant noodle association i got an instant noodles.org so these are real facts right here like the I wow. mean, does full, it, full research full research all right all right all right we're here for another episode we both just got back traveling i'm from the philippines you're back from bangkok yes now i've been to bangkok a few times but i'm pretty sure you right. had a little yeah. different experience sure than me yeah yeah <laughs> Good, nice little food place nice little food city <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, I always usually go for the street food, but man, you, you've kind of already been dropping hints that like you had a little different experience in the food scene. Yeah. So I got invited to this dinner. Uh, it's actually a place I've been wanting to check out for a while, but fortunately, very, very fortunate to be invited to this dinner. It's a place called, um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Ham, Huam. So I think basically means like, um, home with something Oh man, I totally forgot. I got it. Yeah, sounds amazing. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm cut, drooling let's, at the let's, mouth. Let's right do now. this again. Do this again. Do this. Wow. Again. Um. Okay, we we cut. We cut. We cut. We do this again. No man, we are not cutting. <laughs> Let, go. Let them know that you can't remember the most of remember meal you've had this year. Bro, I have a memory like a goldfish, bro. Yeah. What? Where was it? Man, bro, it's been like yeah. best meal of my life. Best meal of the year. Changed the way I you smells good and home it's a play on words yeah smells good and home okay let's go so it smells good in the home okay <laughs> yeah. no, i kind of like that bro keep going we ain't cutting that we ain't cutting no, that it was funny yeah, you're evil i know <laughs> but just to let everyone i do my memory is like the worst anyways so hum uh smells good but also has a, it's a play of a thai word smells good tastes like home um so it's the setting is basically uh chef dylan has a, a home or a, I think it's a house. Yeah, it's a house. Um, back in 2019, or I guess during COVID-ish times, he was just doing some meals from home. And eventually it turned into like a little private kitchen. People would come over to eat in his dining room. It was like 60 seats or so. No, not 60. 60. Six, oh, six man. seats. In his home, 60 <laughs> seats. <laughs> Told you, my, my memory is terrible. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> six seats seats also and then it just went from there now he's turned his living room into another communal table which is about eight seats so i think he does around i would say maybe 12 covers a night for four nights a week yeah um and it's just him cooking right him serving it, it feels basically you're going over to a friend's house really that's incredible cool. um but the food's based off uh thai family home dinners What's the seating? I'm still interested about the seating arrangement because when I think of like going to somebody's home, it's not gonna be feeling like family. I'm like, is there like an adult table and like a kid table? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> or maybe because it's divided into two rooms now. I don't know what Dylan's really doing with that, but you so like, basically, it was yeah. His dining room was the main eating area, but then he gutted out his uh, living room right. and he put a nice community table in there, decorated really nice. So it has this really cool small Thai restaurant feel. Um, but someone's home at the same time. It's BYO. You bring your own booze. Oh, really? Yeah. That, okay, well, it's that's about, interesting. So you do, it's a set menu, but it's also a sharing type of set menu. Thai food, you yeah, said Thai, Thai food. food. Yeah, so you do a starter, like a little appetizer, a couple of entrees to start, and then um, some stir fries, rice, curries, uh, soup, and a couple of desserts. Wait, to is it tasting menu? Tasting menu format-ish. Right. So... The first couple of courses, uh, everyone gets a bite each. Okay. But okay. then the main course, when you eat with rice, you right. share it. Oh, um, straight. You're straight. sharing with like strangers. Well, the idea is, yeah, you can book a table for your group of friends. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, whatever's available on that night, you might be sharing with friends, I think. That's I'm cool. not friends, I'm strangers. Right. Well, that's cool. That kind of brings people well, together. You know, I think that's an amazing concept because when you eat in Asia, you got to eat, you're basically sitting with strangers anyway, no? Yeah. So like, I think that was a big culture shock for me coming to Asia. Yeah. Is you know in America and I think same in like Australia. Yeah. You go to a restaurant, you order a plate, and you mm. get your plate. If somebody's yeah. like, "Give me a fry," you're like, "No, get off yeah. my plate." Yeah, right. And then you get to Asia and you go with a bunch of people. Yeah, we get five, six, seven. How many? Whole, how, order a whole bunch of shit on the table. Okay, you get the thing in Asia. 
the spins, the share of people, right? Or what is that thing called? In the middle of the table, like Chinese All restaurants? Oh, the, the Lazy Susan. Yeah, la- yeah. yeah, Lazy Susan. Well, I guess we got them in Western culture as well. Yeah. But like Lazy Susan for yeah. sharing meals. like. Yeah. And I love it, mm. you know, because me, like, I'm always pretty much solo. So I like to go with friends. You can yeah. try a bunch of bunch, bunch of stuff and yeah. really get the experience somewhere. So I think that you're bringing strangers together is a cool concept. It's amazing. It's it's like the whole concept, the whole, you know, how it was executed. It's something that I've, I've always really wanted to do. Right. It's something I, based, to be honest, like when I first started cooking, this was how I started cooking. It was a bunch of friends come over to eat, hang out. Well, too young to really drink back then. Oh, what? did you make goikun for him? Did make goikun, oh, but man. back then I was experiment. I was, I was, I was stupid and like naive. I experimented with like Western food, oh. <laughs> making like ris- risottos and you know, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's it, you. You feel like you're at a restaurant, but you're not at the same time. And I think this is really special because it takes away from. You know, sometimes when I go to restaurants, I feel really intimidated. Even as a chef, oh, really? and I work in restaurants, I don't like going to those types of full formal. I want to say in your face, but it's it's uncomfortable for me. Mm. I'm more of a, a casual type of person, just hang out with a bunch of mates. See, and I think that'd be good because I've gone to, I guess. I'll call it like fine dining, whatever, mm. but I go solo usually. Yeah. And so for me, it's kind of like you want to go, but you want to share it with people. But I don't always yeah, got like definitely. a mate or a friend to go with, yeah. but this would really ingroup you with people that are yeah. trying to go and have the same experience yeah. as you. Yeah, the food at Hum was, yeah, like I said, Thai food, but Chef Dylan, he's he's an American. Oh, he's with, American. With Thai heritage. Where's he from? Oh, I can't remember. I think Probably like Cali? No, he had a twang. I think he was from South. Actually, he is from the South. Because he had Hell some of his dishes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it'll be pretty cool. Actually, I'm trying to go again in August. Should yeah. come along. Um, maybe we bring the podcast over there. I don't come know. Uh, where was I going? Yeah, so some of his dishes had that. So he had this um, wok seared uh, hanger steak. But it had some of that smoky southern vibe to it as well. Yeah. Um, same with some of the stir fries he did some of the sauces it's like you taste it it's like it's as Thai as it can get but it also has elements of him right. which i find really really special because as what I, what i've really struggled with here living in vietnam is i don't really f- i'm i haven't been able to find that whereas the food from i guess the more more modern ish restaurants they don't gravitate towards vietnamese flavors it goes towards like that western or the uh, Japanese type of flavors and influences. Right, definitely. I mean, just to back that up, like I've never gone to a Vietnamese, again, higher, finer dining category restaurant yeah. and seen anything over the, the price of a, like a million dollars. Yeah. But if you go to a Japanese restaurant, you can spend $5 million easy. Mm. If you go to a Western restaurant, you spend $4 million by the, like a blink of the yeah. eye. It's it's insane, the, the difference in just prices. Yeah. And I think in Vietnam, we're still struggling with trying to like realize that, oh man, Vietnamese food can be... Mm this fine dining, yeah. you know, high price food. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And actually Huam wasn't, man, shout out to Dylan. It was dinner on the house. Um, but I, I don't think it was, it's, his place is quite affordable. I think it's around, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong, but it's either 700 or 900 baht per person. Did, on the house? Yeah. Did he know he was getting a podcast? No. Oh man. <laughs> That's a bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what what else do I want to say about it? It's yeah, it's just the vibe. Like the music was like chill. It's like just him hosting, him cooking, bringing out the food, pouring wine, pouring water. But like, I want you to rice. take me through it. Like, so yeah, you like know. show up and it's like an apartment complex. Or no, it's a kind of, house. He's it's, out but a house. It's in um, I don't know the whole schematics of Bangkok, but it, it's an area called On Nut, I think. Yeah. Um. So really, it felt really suburban. It was like. Almost like in the back streets of, uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if everyone can relate, but back streets of Taoting that you can relate. Okay, yeah, yeah. So like kind super of like quiet, suburb, but quiet. So, yeah, nice. Um, and then you then wouldn't like, even think there's a restaurant in here. Then you like walk in, and is yeah. he like in Thai, like welcome home, or is like what? sort of like really? well, he, he's an American guy. He was right? like, you know, what's up? Type okay, of thing. so he opened like the a... door like. I was outside, I was trying to film as, as I do. And then he just opens up, I was like, hey, bow, right? I was like, we've never met before. Right. And he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's a little more just like casual in right. the so greetings fun. and everything. So fun, yeah. Okay. But 
the just the execution was like really well done how it was presented how it was played it like it, it just you look at it it's Thai but there's just something about it that he added right I think it was really special what was your favorite dish um, he did this uh, soy wa like the the sausage oh but like he, the northern Thai but, sausage yeah but he fried it so it was basically like a corn dog soy wa but wait so he put a casing on it too <laughs> yeah, right? or yeah. like a like a yeah, so corn so, batter and dipped it yeah so crispy and it was like the sauce was like like barbecuey ketchupy and oh we are from the same like, place because like sounds a little white trash and I like it <laughs> <laughs> When I had it, I looked at it, I was like, this looks fun. And I had it, I was like, holy fuck. Nothing makes me more happier than like chefs that are like, push the envelope, future, fine dining, and then they serve you, serve you like a corn dog. I love that. I, I think that's where, f- to be honest, I think this is where food is going. And I think this is where food should go. That's fun though. That's exciting. It's fun. Well, it goes back to eating 101 or just dining out 101. You're meant to have fun. Right. You meant to go out, enjoy yourself with friends, or I don't know, on a date or something. You meant to have fun. It's not meant to be like serious and crazy. Uh, that's just me. Okay, I got you. He literally, it was like a corn batter. He dipped it in. I'm still kind of stuck on the corn sausage. batter, but like you know, so some corn dogs can be quite like, I guess, battery and soft. This yeah. was like so crispy, so crispy. Yeah, like okay. you can on an ASMR type of bite type of thing. Uh, <laughs> mm. But yeah, that was an amazing meal. Uh, I also got to, I was invited to go to a place called uh, Shenan, which is what I'm wearing here. Yeah, Shenan. Um, little-ish wine bar, lots of, lots of, lots of, amazing natural wine list. Um, had a couple of bites there, really cool flavors. Again, he just mixed, there was a mixture of everything. It was like a bit of like, there was Sichuan spice in some of the dishes. There was, uh, there was a fried, um, what was it? A fried fried cheese, I can't remember. Manchego cheese right. cream, crispy as anything. So much flavor, but then he had other. I'm the worst, actually. I'm the worst at regurgitating meals that I've had. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you're not going to regurgitate it, but okay. Oh, in that way, but it's not like telling people what I ate because who's the honestly, chef at Shinin? Mike. Mike. Okay. Yeah, he's got. He's actually his his place is pretty cool. So he's got a, like a little cocktail bar downstairs, the restaurant, wine bar ups in the first level. And then he's got a tasting chef's counter on the top level, which is pretty cool. He invited me to come back and do in August. So I'm looking forward to that one. Man, dude, you're going to be in, I guess you'll be in Bangkok in August. Yeah. Wherever, I guess, the invites are, wherever the opportunities are, I just do it and go. So I miss go- going back to Huam. What was it called? Huam. Huam, Huam, Huam. Going back to Huam, like, as, it, as, as some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so back to Huam, like, yeah. as somebody who's worked in food and beverage, to see him doing something like this, like, is that eye opening to you? Is that something you're kind of like jealous? Yeah. You're like, damn, bro, like, I'm so yeah. jealous. Je- jealous would be a good word. Um, inspired would be another good word. Um, and just for me, because the really hard thing is when I took up cooking, obviously, I went down that little western path, but then I w- went back to the roots of um, what my mom taught me. Um, through her restaurant and what dad taught me was, you know, Vietnamese Chinese flavors. Right. And I guess over the past maybe two or three years, I've definitely gravitated. No, I've deviated like so far from what I've actually really wanted to cook and what I really want to cook. Because it's more, you know, not like I'm very confident in my own ability, very confident in what I cook and what I serve, but... There is also a lot of, um, I would say, fear in acceptance. And I've been fortunate enough to cook in different cities and different countries around the world, but I've really found cooking in Vietnam one of the most challenging places to, I've ever been. Yeah, but cook. why is that? Just because, like, you're kind of like, I mean, you're, well, your cha- family's Vietnamese, but, like, you grew up in Australia and, you, like, this identity crisis or what? what's scary about it? Uh, not so much identity crisis because, first of all, well, okay, Identity, uh, first and foremost, I'm Australian. I right. never really say to people I'm Vietnamese because I'm not. Right. I wasn't born in Vietnam. Uh, I was born in Australia. I grew up with fellow Australians. The culture of Australia, like I know off the back of my head, Vietnamese culture, I, I, I don't really, I, I'm able to speak it. I'm able to cook most of the dishes. I'm able to read, write. 
but it's not as fluent as I'd want it to be. Right. But it's hard for me to say I'm Vietnamese because I'm not from Vietnam. Well, you do drop the C word like every other word. So also give away that you're not Vietnamese. <laughs> I'm going to try to not do it in this episode. <laughs> but and it, just, yes, just coming back, um, it's, it's hard in the way where Vietnamese people are very passionate about their own cuisine. Every, every country is passionate about their own cuisine. But it just, for me, it just hits different here because whenever any pop-up, pop-ups I've done here, if I do any dishes that are, you know, Vietnamese inspired or flavored, to, to people, there are, to the most diners, they're not, when, when you're cooking, you want to, I don't want to say you want to um, blow minds, but right. you want to make people happy, obviously. You want people to really enjoy their meal. It's not, I'm not saying they don't enjoy their meals, but they're not as wowed as if you were to cook a really sick French dish. They is, w- it's w- more like if, it, if a diner in Vietnam, of Viet, like Vietnamese I'm talking, okay, yeah, yeah. if they're going out to eat, they don't necessarily want to eat Vietnamese um, dishes if they're going to spend money. They want to be able to feel special and spoil themselves and eat something that they didn't grow up eating. Yeah, they want the French, the Japanese. Yeah, uh, that's why most of the more popular restaurants in Saigon and Hanoi are Western restaurants. Oh, yeah, they're like that either like Nordic, like Scandinavian, they're Japanese, yeah, they're French. Yeah, the, because their experience and the sensation is so much different. Mm-hmm. Like you don't grow up eating these things. You don't grow ex- experience these like um, 10, 20 course meals. Right. And I think, and that's not what I cook, right? And I think the only way I've seen Vietnamese elevated price point, just okay, solely, can I, can, can, solely going price point. Can, no, just, <laughs> no, I have to stop you on this one because I, okay, in life there's no rights or wrongs, but I don't really like the word elevated when you attach it to Vietnamese because when you say elevated, it just my my thought is when you say you want to elevate the cuisine or elevate Vietnamese food, that means you're saying. The original food, Vietnamese food, is bad. Oh, man. I knew I hit a pressure point on that one. I didn't mean <laughs> no, like that, that. I'm just talking about like higher priced stuff. Yeah. Not elevated food. <laughs> just price point. Yeah. Price point. So use that. Price point solely. <laughs> I knew I hit, I no, knew but, I hit but a do trigger. You, do, you, do you get where I'm coming from though? Like if, yeah, uh, I want to elevate the cuisine. I want to elevate Vietnamese food. That means you're saying you're not really respecting. It's just, oh, this is sure. my, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying people who, who are saying that are wrong. But just in my eye, and I want people to think about this. You're basically saying how how I see it is the original cuisine isn't good enough, so you have to make it better. No, definitely. Maybe that that terminology terminology was way wrong. We you know we know my English sucks, but what I'm gonna say is the only Vietnamese restaurants I've been to that have like a higher price point mm. is because they use something like uh, Japanese beef or they use an Australian beef yeah. or you know what I mean. So it's mm. the whole thing we were getting talked to like why can't you have the higher price point with Vietnamese ingredients solely? I, I think a lot of it comes down to consumer acceptance mm. they are more willing to accept that foreign ingredients and foreign products are far superior than what is grown locally yeah but i think there's because a there's a there. there's in a way there's lack of trust mm. and this is you know through what's been happening in the past how the economy is there's lack of trust of what is grown here is as good as what foreigners can grow mm, interesting yeah which is sad because there there are pockets in vietnam and provinces that really have amazing produce um oh, really sure. seasonal as well but it just comes down to a lot of knowledge and you gotta it, it for me it's really hard because i find vietnamese people some of the most proudest cultures in the world but it's sad to see they're not proud of the produce here. But I, I sort of understand why there is that angst as well. They're very proud about their cuisine, but in a way where it's proud, but to them it's also normal. Mm-hmm. Which I, I guess for me as travelers, as tourists, when we come here, we're always wowed by whatever we see around aunties and uncles, whatever stalls they have, whatever food, however the techniques are, we're so wowed with that. Yeah, because it's maybe because it's different because we're we're not exposed to that. But when you're here, you grow up here, like you, it's it just becomes the norm. Well, you could easily take it for granted, right? Yeah, definitely. I think like the same. When, you know, when I lived in Australia, I took a lot of things for granted. Right. No, I I back that up. We have a lot of great produce. Got a lot, you know, herbs, fruits, rice, mm. a lot of things that are great here. Um, and I think there has been a shift forward. 
towards taking care of it more because I think you see more farms that are pushing the organic, higher quality, mm. uh, higher price in the past couple of years. Most definitely. I think what COVID has uh, really accelerated and showed us that when you're forced to shut off from the rest of the world, you need to explore what's around you. Right. And people really saw, I, I, I definitely really saw that um, people were able to explore more of Vietnam here. And they were like really proud of, you know, oh, this beach untouched, so amazing, this this cuisine. And and then that just triggers on from generation to generation, I think. Right, for sure. So, yeah, I think it's going to take time. It is a, a country that is growing rapidly fast, a booming economy. I think it was one of the few countries in the world like during COVID it was still growing. Right. Um, it's definitely <coughs> going to take time for... Cause for the cuisine to like, I guess, somewhat go back a couple of steps and catch up. I don't know if this makes any sense to anyone, but I hope it does. Yeah, <laughs> one more problem about <laughs> Vietnam too. It's not really a problem, but the thing is, the, the things we do well with the, like the produce and everything, mm. we give it away for free. Yeah, because, well, that's culturally, like people are so generous. Oh, I know. Like, I mean, you get all the time. vegetables with your bun sale, you know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. it's all free. Yeah, what but, about the that, garlic? And Lisa that's garlic. That's normal. The Lisa garlic is yeah. some of the best garlic I've ever had yeah. in the world. And but it's yeah, free on the side. All those condiments, it's, it's <coughs> so crazy that that stuff isn't, I guess, charged for. Oh, no. And I, it, it, I, to me, it should be like, it's so, okay. This is another qualm I have. Uh, this, this, this podcast might go haywire, but it's so fucked up that we always celebrate price in Vietnam. Celebrate price in terms of, oh, this was only 40,000. This was only 20,000. But like, you got to think about it. What stop and then people co- would convert it back to oh this was like a doll. <laughs> I'm not having a go at you, okay? Because <laughs> this is your I premise of your. <laughs> on this, episode. this is the premise of your tags on your YouTube, but um, it's just so crazy that everything has to be converted back. Like you, you eat something and it's like oh this was a one dollar bun sale or whatever, but why does it have to be a one dollar bun sale? Why can't it be I don't know, a fifty thousand dollar bun sale or dong? I mean. So I think, because for me, if you keep going down this direction, cuisine can't grow because <coughs> you, you subcategorize it in a, I hate the word, cheapness of it. Mm. Whereas there's so much labor involved. There's, like you said, there's so much free vegetables and herbs that go with every dish. There's all these condiments. They're, they're not paying themselves a proper wage. Basically, whatever they make, they keep. There's no salary on it. There's, you know, the, whatchamacallit, uh, minimal income is quite low. Rent, like there's barely any overheads for rent because they're out on the, well, most vendors obviously, they're out on the streets, but if they don't have, you know, those types of, they, they can't charge because it's a, a set amount that's generally accepted on how much a, an item should be. But I think that's so wrong. Yeah, it's hard because, you know, I'll make a lot of videos. I'll be like, oh man, you know, this is really good. And everybody will be like, well, how much yeah. is it? If you say something's like 30K, I'm like, yeah. eh. But I know one that's 25K. Exactly. It's such a weird and, I don't know, problematic mentality of uh, how, how do we flip the script and how do we create a conversation where can we please celebrate the, the craftsmanship and, you know, how these cuisines are being made um, and all that. It's, it, I don't know. And it's, fr- it's frustrating. Uh, I mean, I don't have the answer <laughs> and I don't think you do either, do you? No. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest, this is why I don't really want to cook anymore. Because too good outside, right? Not that it's too good. Like it's it's soul destroying. It's, it's well for me. Like we, we go back to you know finding inspiration. I I adore Vietnamese food so much. It's what I want to cook, but I feel like I can't cook it as much as I want to because price point is a huge part of it. Like a lot of pop ups that I do, it always struggles down to the price. And I know, I know things have to be affordable, but also I need to make a living as well. The ones work around me need to make a living as well. Um, the supplies need to be paid. Everything is increasing, but the general acceptance of how much you pay for, I, I can't speak for all cuisines, but just my experience with Vietnamese cuisines is always low. Right. And then when I do a pop-up or a stint at a, at a Western restaurant, the ticket prices are so fucking high, right. which rightly so as well, because produce and everything, everything that's made, like the, that, that place is like, yeah, it's not about hating on Western cuisine. It's no. price point. It's yeah. saying that Vietnamese cuisine shouldn't be below it. 
Well, they, they need, I don't know. It's just this qualm that I have, which I struggle with day in, day out. Even as if I take myself as a diner, maybe I don't want to pay for that much as well. Because okay. I'm not earning Get that. out. <laughs> yeah. But ha- the thing is, yeah. I Well, why I'm not really in the restaurant world as much as I want to be is it's a fucking broken system. Right. For sure. The mini. But, you know, I don't want to be so negative and I want to take it back to Huam. Um, I think restaurants going down this direction, I think it will be a pretty cool move. Yeah. Um, and it takes it back to, like I said, hospitality or cooking one on one. It's just cooking with friends, cooking with soul, cooking with love, sharing what you do, sharing with your friends or strangers. It's all about like creating a little community. Right. Can I can I ask how like, you know, Dylan, when he's giving you a dish, yeah. and he's explaining like maybe where a fish came from. Yeah. Does he go into a lot of detail? Because I think to tie in the Vietnam in Dylan's restaurant, yeah. Quam together. Mm is there needs to be more of a celebration in Asia for like how special this fish is or how small of a factory this nook mum comes yeah. from and how special that is. Yeah, well, I guess I was, I was eating with some, I think the kings of Thai cuisine, and Thai food. So he didn't really delve deep into um, the product itself, but it was more celebrated. Oh, you know, you know, this was in season. Uh, I wanted to use this for this dish. You right. know, and it was like basically... It was also a bit of feedback for him as well. Well, what did you think about it? But it was that engagement, right? It was mm-hmm. just real engagement. It wasn't... So because sometimes when you approach and say, oh, it's this fish from this region, or, uh, some people can be quite intimidated by that because like, oh, where's that? I don't really know what that breed is. But it's more... He was... It was just casually his friend. Oh, I saw this at the market, blah, blah, blah. This is what I did with it. Right. That's yeah. cool. But yeah. I still think there needs like in chefs to be... Especially if you want to raise the price point and mm. push... You know, but it means I'm gonna say this wrong again. To the higher Stop price using point, that word. I know to a higher <laughs> price point. Like you gotta show people. Like I, I think when I go to Japan, I eat, and they're always like, "This fish is available two months of the year, but you're getting to eat it." Oh yeah, definitely. Like I think yeah, you start mini conversations like that. Like you need to More like let people know what knowledge. they're eating is just like something really special. For like sure. market it, but then more. you market it, and again, like I'm saying, it's just the storytelling. Right, exactly. Storytelling, yeah, marketing, en- engagement. It's just like. Being more than food. Well, there's so much more to uh, uh, when a dish hits your hits hits the table. There's so much work and energy that goes into it that people really gotta see more than what's on the plate. Right. Which is, but then that's the role of you know a, a restaurant or a chef or a maitre d or a server. These are the moments where you, they need to be able to relay that information to mm-hmm. the diners. Yeah, I definitely think a lot. Of, I mean, still going back to Vietnamese food because it's what I know probably the best. Yeah. You know, a lot of you'll see, oh, she sells like this noodle dish from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah. Oh, how cute. She sells three hours. Yeah. Well, yeah, she's been up since 1 a.m. Yeah. You know, making the broth and cutting yeah. the pork mm. and separating the bones. And, yeah. You know, butchering this piece of beef or pork or whatever. Yeah. All the way down to the usable part. Yeah. That's what I mean to. And then when people just celebrate just that price point which is the, the biggest key factor for anything, it's so sad. Mm. It just, for me, it, it breaks me. So whenever I go out to eat, I, it's like, how, how can you just do this by me for 10,000? It just doesn't make sense to me. But what inspires me when I see it is the the smile on the face when they do it. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like, I just like, and they're just like, oh, they're just happy. It's just like, but then I want so much more for them and I want so much more for the cuisine that I think we just forget about prices and really, really, really celebrate the craftsmanship into this. Right. But yeah. Who knows? Man, uh, that I'm, was... I hope I'm proven wrong. Today. We got we got on that one, man. <laughs> I don't even think we meant to go down that, that rabbit hole, but we did. No, we didn't. Oh, man. I can't, I can't remember what I'm, we were planning to talk about today. <laughs> well, we talked about something already. I but think... that's that's... I don't know, for people who are first tuning in, but these are the premises of why we're doing this, okay. having these conversations, rambling on, but hopefully people can take what we're saying and relate to it, and who knows where I can go from there. For sure. How about we lighten the mood a little bit? We're going to do a segment <laughs> we've never done before. I don't know what we're going to call it. I don't know what, but we're going to see how well Bao knows food around the world. 
<clears throat> now, you went to some fine dining. We talked about street food. But how well do you think you know instant noodles? Uh, pretty good, I think. I think we eat more instant noodles in Vietnam than you probably think. I eat more instant noodles than people actually know. <laughs> really? Because, you know, like, you get a lot of fresh rice noodles and stuff. You yeah. probably don't think of instant noodles much in Vietnam. But I went and double-checked, so I had to actually, see. before that, can I just let you know? Yeah. I gave up uh, instant noodles for, like, a good three, four years. Yeah. Were you depressed? Did you become depressed? I think so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I would, too. Yeah. There's but nobody anyways, there for you at 3 a.m. That was a pretty good... No, nobody was there for me at 3 a.m. Didn't have noodles a or anything. slug of, like, bad experiences in the kitchen. Kind oh. of, like, hug a bowl of, like, me guy. So, it was, yeah. But anyways, oh. but I don't eat it. I used to eat it a lot, but now I'm pretty... I'm okay with it. All right. So, I want to see if you can name the top 10 countries that eat the most instant noodles in the world. Top 10 countries. That eat the most instant noodles. Now, this is coming from the World Instant Noodle Association. I got an instantnoodles.org. So these are real facts right here. Like, the, I wow. mean, it doesn't, full, full research. Full research. Full on here. I want like top 10. So I don't have to, I'm just going to name countries. So and I'll tell I'm you where they're one. at. Okay. Um, so obviously, I have to say, I think Vietnam eats a lot. Okay, number three. Ooh. I, yeah. I, three, three sounds about right. China has to be up there. Ooh, that's number one. Yeah, knew it. Uh, two. Two would probably... Uh, oh, okay, I'm not going to do two. I'm just going to name some countries. I think uh, Thailand should be up there. Number nine. Oh, well, that low. Yeah. Wow. This list is going to go wild, bro. Ah, okay. Well, I don't know if this would be 10 because there's a there's one of the most... My most favorite incident is obviously Indomie Mi Goreng. Right. But... In Indonesia, I don't know if they have any other because mie goreng is basically stir fried noodles in Indonesia. So would they have instant noodles or would they just use regular noodles? I've never actually been to Bali, Indonesia, but I'm gonna put it's Indonesia. only a small part of Indonesia, by the way. Indonesia, very big country. Yeah, right. So did you, did you pick Indonesia? Yeah. Number two. Wow. It's like the fourth populous country in the world. Of course, they're gonna be up there for but eating. I, I don't noodles. know any other instant noodle brands apart from. In Indonesia, apart from Indomie. Yeah, well, Indomie, but like mie goreng is like one of the only... Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, I, I don't like... You go to a... I, okay, whenever I go to supermarkets, Asia supermarkets, the first aisle I head to, instant noodles are. Dude, I'm telling you, Indonesian people, yeah. that's one of the only like stir-fried noodles I like is like yeah. in Indonesia. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay, number two. Let's keep it going, bro. You're on fire. You haven't missed one yet. Uh, what I, Do I have five right now? One, two, five for five? You got four, man. Four from four? You got one through three and number nine. Uh, what other countries are there? Okay. Japan. Okay, number five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is it only Asian countries? <laughs> it feels like it's only Asian countries. Um, <laughs> no, there are some non-Asian countries as well that love instant noodles. Okay. What other countries in Asia would have instant noodles? Taiwan, surely? Did, Does not, have... did not make the list. Well, but they got a lot of noodle dishes and noodle soups. and inst... No, really? Did not oh, but make they... the list. Okay, is this a list of consumerism? Yeah, it's like how much ah, they consume. Okay. Oh, cool. I guess it's a small country. Um, I guess what other larger country? I don't do. In, is this? <laughs> I don't want. To, I don't want to get caught out of being like offend anyone. But I don't really see noodles in India. But India is such a large country. So is India on the list? Number four, India. Oh, because actually, yeah. Um, when. Okay, deviating a little bit. I, when I was in Hong Kong, a couple of chefs uh, I was working with, Indian, they always had like this instant crushed noodle or salad type of thing. Oh, uh, so that's sev. Yeah. But Indian, like especially the younger generation, yeah. eats a lot of stir ah. fried noodles. If you go oh, around universities, right. there's a lot of stalls that are doing stir yeah. fried noodles, right. and they'll wrap it in bread yeah. and they'd be sauce. So yeah. it's like this. It's like this instant noodle burrito. Right. It's like your ultimate carb on carb meal. Do they eat so many noodles? Ah, okay. This is no offense. I think I know a country that would have instant noodles because whenever I see their food, there's a lot of processed stuff. So right. Philippines. Oh, like, number seven, yeah, Philippines. Philippines. Um, you what, got number six, number eight, number 10 left. Six. What other countries? Running okay. out of Asian countries. Um, I guess the only other countries that are... Oh, Korea. South Korea, number eight. Right. What other countries got to be? So you have, there's also, I guess, Singapore, Malaysia. There's a lot of noodles there. But is it instant noodles? Because they just go to Hawkinson's. Yeah, and you get the Hawkinson's. You got all the like. Yeah. Oh, man, all the like people that make amazing Hokkien noodles. And, oh, 
No, no. I don't, I don't, I don't want to strike out. Do I get three strikes? Uh, you got zero strikes so far. You're no, I got strike. Taiwan was wrong. Oh, uh, okay. You got one, one strike. strike. So I get three strikes? Could have cheated. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm just going to go for it. All right. I'm going to go Malaysia. No, not on the top 10. I know, amazing. I, I literally, I think it's like you said, though, they got too many good, like, fresh right. noodles. Yeah, that's, so that's why. You got too so many people making Three countries left? Noodles. No, you got two. You got number two. six and number 10. Um, okay, non Asian countries, instant noodles, <laughs> the USA. Oh, number six. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You know what? Like we may not be an Asian country, but I know. we got the you influence. Love we got the shit. influence. Whoa, 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 whoa! I was going for a very wholesome thing here. Like okay. we have a lot of just like people from all over the world, and then you're like, we say we eat a lot of shit. Process shit. I'm Man, not saying shit. That kind of hurts. Stuff. Number ten's left. I don't think you're gonna get this one at number all. Ten. Number ten. Can I have kind of a clue? A hint? Um, by a vowel. Man, if I give you this hint, it's too good. Uh, it is. Oh. Give me a vacant in the continent of South America. Continent of South America. Ah, it has to be. Okay, I have to relate it to Asia somehow, but Chile. Ooh, other side. I don't know my geography that well on that okay. side. Okay, they speak Portuguese. Brazil? Yeah, it's number 10, Brazil. What? I know, right? But every time. Well, I'm like, not so versed with cuisine of South America anyway, but I've, I've only been to Argentina. Peru and Chile. Man, yeah, Brazil, number 10. But Chile had a lot of, um, when I was there, was, it, was Chile? Or, no, Chile. Chile was, um, is number 43 Chinese, on the Chinese, list. Chinese influence. Yeah, same as Peru. Chile is number 43. Oh, Peru is number 34. Yeah. Um, what about yeah. Uh, good old Australia? Australia, you're number 21. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad, nice. Too well, many, is too it, many is it a good thing, though, that we're not high? I don't, I don't know. know. Too many meat pies and stuff, I guess. Oh, fuck, I can go with meat pie right now. Number 11 really kind of blew my mind, though. Nigeria. Oh, sausage roll. Sorry, what? <laughs> Ni- Nigeria was number 11. Really? Yeah, I think there's a lot of debate. I think they, like, invented, like, a brand of instant noodles from Nigeria. Yeah, right. They eat a lot, bro. Nice. I was super amazed. You know, it's like, I mean, people always, assi- like, associate Asia with noodles and stuff, but there's, yeah. still, there's still a lot of Asian countries that don't eat a lot of noodles. Like, Laos, they always eat sticky rice. Mm. Cambodia wasn't on mm. there. I thought that was interesting. But yeah, I didn't even think about Because... I think for me is how I approach that little exercise you gave me was whenever I'm at a grocery aisle, like I said, the aisle, I go always go for the instant noodles and you see right. what else is around, especially any country. I do. What's what's there? Who's doing what? That's kind of crazy. I was like expecting kind of Russia too. Like Russia is like a dark horse. Yeah. Because it's so big. I don't, I also had to think about the cuisine as well. Like, do they even eat noodles? Well, they're themselves? number 12, so I was close. Oh, wow. What, yeah. what noodles are in Russia? Russia. Instant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, that was fun. That was kind of like a first time trying to say me like that. Do you, okay, you eat instant noodles, obviously. Do you mm, have yeah. a, like a top five that you eat? Oh man, I kind of like you. Not really. I kind of like a lot of the. Do you like a soupier one or just something like you can kind of drain and have it? Both. In the bus. Okay. Depending so. on the mood, depending on the weather. Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of brands I eat, like you said, Indonesian brand. Oh man. I love that. What's the end of, I just went blank on the name. The Indonesian brand on Indomie. Indomie. Thank yeah. you. Indomie. Migraine. I like Indomie a lot. Um, clearly, because I remember. The I name. only like the Indomie migraine, the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many different flavors out at the moment. I don't really like. I don't really. I don't know what I'm tasting. I just want the original. Right. Fried egg, some extra hanfi. Oh, yum. <laughs> Which is fried shallots, by the way. I think you get a lot of good stuff from like Japan and Korea. I think their instant noodles are pretty darn good too. If you want like soupier, like with some like, I'm not. I would say I'm not the biggest fan. Actually, cup noodles. Yeah, like a cup noodle. No, nah, uh, okay. I like the branding. I love the packaging. Did you know? Have you, like do you know the cup noodle dish. hack? What's the cup noodle hack? So Obviously like, no. Okay, like so really you make your noodles. noodles right. Yeah. You eat all the noodles, and yeah. so you're left with the broth. Oh, you crack an egg. You crack an egg. Start put it in microwave. Oh, microwave. Bro, it's so good. Yeah. Oh no, I've seen that one. But it yeah, nice. I don't really eat cup noodles. Yeah, I think I've probably only tried it twice in my life, and never liked it. But mm. mine's probably uh, migraine, obviously up there. Um, the stir fried noodle dish. Thai. Okay. Indomie. Okay, there we go. Migraine. Um, the mama, the Thai mama mm. pork, Thai mama tom yum. Excellent. Um, what else is there? There's shin ramyun. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that's what I was getting at. So that's four, five. What would be five? Five would be. Oh. Uh, 
Would you ever do a menu for like a dining for people with instant noodles? Hell yeah. I've actually wanted to do this for a while, but just haven't found the right opportunity. What if you did it. like an instant noodle tasting menu? Why do we have to do a tasting menu? I fucking hate tasting menu. Okay, maybe not a tasting <laughs> menu, but like a variety, okay? You're like, hey guys, so like I sourced these instant noodles all the way from Thailand. I flew to Thailand myself. Yeah. I went to seven or eight 7-Elevens before I could find the this variety right here on your plate. You see, that's marketing right there. And people be like, wow, <laughs> that is amazing. I will pay much more but money for this plate of instant noodles not, now. Maybe not a tasting menu, but... I'd love to incorporate it. Like one of my dreams, if I ever had fortunate enough to have a natural wine bar, one of the dishes would be an instant noodle dish. Right. And I'd serve it in like, I don't know, a cool cup or something. I don't know. What um, wine would you drink with that? I don't know. Whatever. I'm not a, actually, when wines, I'm not a... Don't say snob because you're a snob. Not a snob no, I'm not a wine pairing person. It's either I like the bottle, I like the drink, or I don't. Hmm. not really into like, oh, this would go well with that and like... My palate is not that complicated. My, I'm a simple simpleton. Um, okay. That was was that five? That was five. That's close enough. No, that's four. Oh yeah, I was gonna say I. I'm not the biggest. Fi- oh, actually, Vietnam's instant new game very very strong, very good. Okay. But I don't know if it can be in my top five though. Maybe it could one of them. I think the the prawn the milk. Something, the, you know the one I'm talking about? The, the brown paper bag one? Mm-hmm. That one, I think, could be yeah. up there. Man, that is, you're, you got to work on your marketing, the brown paper bag <laughs> one. <laughs> I've done, my, I, I told you, my brain is like, it's. When it's you like, say you know, brown paper bag, I think of something completely different. I don't even think about like instant noodles. <laughs> what are you thinking? That's a different topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that's good. Delicious. But yeah. Enough about me. I think I feel like we always talking about me. I'm so boring. No, it's good. I think you. Uh, I think you, you sir, is it in Manila? Manila. That may be a topic for another day. Topic for another. Okay, see you. We got on it, bro. <laughs> we might have to cut this one now. I think they're tired of listening to us. Yeah, I'd be tired of listening to. I think we want to wrap this up. Shit. We're gonna push that one to another another episode. Cool beans. Nice. Um, hey, you did good on the instant noodles. We hit some buttons today, oh but. God. Sorry, I'm you had to hear us rant more than bit. have fun. Pat on the back. Got a little serious. But that is, <laughs> that's going to do it for today's episode. We're going to move it on, and uh, we'll catch you all at the next nice. one. Thank you so much for listening. Yep. Peace.